Hello once again and welcome back to my Character Crusade Unbound Season 2 Let's Play featuring Alucel, the Alteration Swordsman. So where did we leave off last time? Um, I think we had just finished Bleak Falls Barrow um, <clears throat> and I was going to uh, pass through Riverwood, um, sell my junk, um, and then head up through Rorikstead towards Solitude um, in order to continue the search for the Galder uh, amulet um, here in... what's this place called? Fulgenther. Um, so that's what I did. Um, but while in Solitude, um, I took the opportunity to uh, train with Sibyl uh, in destruction magic. Um, I trained three different levels, or three levels um, in that. Um, and while I was in the Blue Palace here, I also heard um, Varnius from Dragon Bridge uh, complaining about strange lights and sounds coming from Wolf's cave over here and we offered to go take a look at it um, <clears throat> Falk Firebeard from the uh, the steward um, in the Blue Palace said that there um, that this is the resting place of the old Queen Potema the Wolf Queen um, and that during her day they um, <clears throat> they practiced a lot of necromancy there um, so ancient Nords and Necromancy is right up Alucel's alley at the moment. Um, that definitely piqued his interest, so we'll go check that out. Um, also, while in Solitude, um, I took the opportunity to check in at the Bard's College and ask for admitten, admittance there. Um, he doesn't really have any interest in being an actual Bard, but he is very interested in having access to their historical archives there. Um, and in order to admit him, they said that uh, we got to come over here and find the uh, the Edda, uh, King Olaf's Edda, or King Olaf's verse, um, right here at Dead Men's Respite, uh, in order to reinstate the burning of King Olaf. Um, so I think while we're here, these are two important things, uh, or would be important to Alucel. Um, he's still not really overly concerned with Meridia's beacon and, and restoring that just yet. Um, with everything that's happened to him recently, hearing voices in his head is, is probably the least of his concerns at this point. <laughs> um, so yeah, once we're done here, uh, we'll probably head back to... Um, Morthal or Dragon Bridge, or actually probably Solitude to sell off our, all of our uh, loot that we find in here. Um, and then before heading back down to the Rift to find um, Shalador's writings, uh, we'll go ahead and take care of Wolf Skull Cave and, um, and uh, Dead Man's Respite over here too. So plenty to do over here. Um, this isn't a, a one-stop affair for us here in Solitude. Um, let's see, I also did level up. Um, I think it was a speech increase. Oh no, it was, uh, I had Riorn's drum that I found in uh, a previous dungeon, I don't remember exactly where, but I turned that into uh, Garad um, at uh, the Bard's College. He's the master speech trainer. And apparently he used to be in the Legion um, and increased uh, all of our combat skills by one. Um, and that is what actually pushed us over the edge to level 18. I haven't taken a perk in it yet just because there's nothing really that I want to take except for maybe this energy shield guy here. And I'm still not clear on whether or not I actually need robes. Um, to take advantage of this, or if just not wearing armor is is good enough. Um, and if I do have to wear robes, if the robes from the Divine Elegance shop or Immersive Armors work for that, I'm really not sure. Um, I tried to do some experiments, um, 
but it doesn't look like this leads to any active effect, at least out of combat. So I'm going to do a little more research on this before I take it because it might require uh, a change in attire. Um, and if that's going to happen, then I'll probably do that uh, <clears throat> after the next episode. Uh, I'm sorry, after the next um, episode of the Character Crusade Unbound podcast, uh, probably along the same time as uh, when I smith up a new sword, uh, just to kind of mark the evolution of Alucel, um, and a new episode in the podcast, which will bring some more story points as well. So yeah, I'm hanging on that perk for now. Um, if we run into trouble uh, soon, we can we can use it for something else. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I seem to be coughing a whole bunch. I don't know where that's coming from. Um, so I hope you can bear with me through this. Uh, all right, so here we are outside of Fulgenther um, to pursue uh, more information on the Galder Saga. Um, and we found this little campsite uh, and this journal here. Um, And basically, this guy uh, named what, what, what's his name here? Denas Valen. That sounds like a, a dark elf name. Um, he becomes obsessed with the Galder legend uh, and tracks down uh, an ivory claw, which apparently he needs to uh, unlock uh, something in this tomb regarding the Galders. Um, and basically he becomes quite murderous <laughs> and very obsessed with, with finding this thing. Um, so yeah, I, I think the answers of what happened to him uh, lie inside of Fulgenther. Uh, it looks like a lot of his uh, companions did not make it. Actually, I want to take this. This, this might be useful for us later on. Yes, my if we ever have to cross-reference with something else regarding um, our encounters with Haldir and uh, this whole curse situation. So, let's see what this place has in store for us, huh? Yeah, I know. Thanks for the running commentary there, Raya. This ain't my first rodeo, and you know that because you've been with me through all of them. All right, Captain Obvious, let's go in. Well, at least it's well lit in here. All right, looks like we got Draugr and Traps, which were all mentioned in the journal. Unlucky adventure. I'll say so. Unlucky or just stupid? Did he run into the trap or did he run into the draugr? Okay, this looks like one of the claw slots. Uh, this probably is unlocked by the ivory claw that was mentioned in the journal. What's that guy's name again? Danas something. Valen. I'll just call him Valen. Another unlucky adventurer. Another keyhole for a claw. Tomato seems fairly fresh. So they didn't end this exploration too long ago. Though I do hear a Draugr now. Alright, well we can't do anything without the claw at this point, so... Let's continue onward. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention that uh, I did 
rest at the Winking Skeever in Solitude, and now I have 29 spells instead of 20. So that should help quite a bit. Oh, jeez. Trying to inch around it. Next time I'll just have to jump. That's just a dead adventure, it's not an unlucky one. Uh-oh. Yeah, so, um... Apocalypse Spell Package, which I'm running, uh, another one of Anision's amazing overhauls, um, has an alteration spell called... Um, Uh-oh. Called Alarm that alerts you to enemies within a fairly big radius. Um, but I find that Okado's recital with a flesh spell works just as well. Get some nice opportunity here to test ourselves without Raya. Took a power shot there, but... Um, Fortunately for us, our... Uh... Ooh, what's going on up there? We got... This place is the worst for rattling corpse bugs like this. Super annoying. Um, anyway, fortunately for us, our armor rating through our flesh spells is, is high enough that uh, we were able to absorb it. Um, and let's see, depending on how well this goes, I might increase my difficulty level, because that should have been a lot harder than it was. I'm on Expert. Yeah, I might kick that up to Master, depending on how the, the boss battle here goes. Nice. Always down for a one-handed skill increase. And I think we need some light. Yeah, I don't remember the last time I played this game and went through this area and didn't have one of these rattling corpse uh, bugs occur <clears throat> with one of these Draugr corpses somewhere in this room. I guess all you can do is try to tune it out and move on as quickly as possible. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about the glowing unread books mod, but in that case I would have never seen that that book without it. Which is both a good thing and a bad thing, I think. Whoa. Don't know what's in that water, but I would rather not find out. In this game, uh, what you don't see can, and often does, hurt you. <laughs> um, I know that there's nothing under there that can hurt me, but out of the cell it doesn't, and he would rather not find out. Well, here's Valen himself. He is indeed a dark elf. Um, let's see what else he has on him. Well, great, looks like we have some more map markers. And the Ivory Claw. Great. Uh, so let's take advantage of this candlelight. And, um... What was that journal called? Uh, let's go ahead and read his second journal there, if I can find it. Huh. Here we go. Alright, well I'm going to go ahead and read this. I hope you guys can bear with me while I do this. How to summarize 
A lifetime of research. So little of what I have learned matters now. The petty politics of ancient times, the age-long campaign to wipe out all mention of the Galder name. I know not what awaits us within Fulgenther, so here, then, is the truth of the tale, as best as I have been able to piece it together. Ooh, good. In the opening days of the First Era, the Archmage Galder was revered throughout the North. Wisdom, wealth, honor, and power were his, and even Isgrimor's heirs sought his counsel. Smothered by his shadow, Galder's three sons grew cruel and resentful. They lusted after their father's power and prestige, and eventually Jirik, the, old, the eldest, discovered its source, a mysterious amulet. Jirik is the Draugr uh, boss that we fought in Sarthal, from which he never parted. Together, they conspired to murder their father in his sleep and divide his amulet between them. And so it was done. Consumed by their newfound power, the brothers laid waste to the surrounding villages. So great was the carnage that the High King himself intervened, sending a company of battle mages led by the Archmage Geiermund to subdue the brothers. And after a devastating battle, the three fled the field. Mikrul, the youngest, was run aground in Fulgenther. So Mikrul is the one we'll be facing here, I think. The ancient barrow at the foot of Solitude. And though he fought for three days and nights, he was at last overcome and entombed there, his crypt sealed by an ivory claw. Gyrman pursued Jirik to the shattered crypts of Sarthal, half buried even then. Ten veteran wizards fell before Jirik's elemental magic, but he could not overcome them altogether. He too fell, and was sealed within the ruined city. And at last, Sigdis was covered or I'm sorry, was cornered in the southernmost reaches of Skyrim. He challenged Lord Geirman to a duel, knowing his foe was honor-bound to accept. And they clashed in battle, matched strength for strength, and fell together on the field before Iverstead. The High King ordered a tomb built for Geirman on the lake, which still bears his name, and had Sigdis sealed within, forever guarded by the one who slew him. Galder himself was interred in a cave not far from where his tower once stood in the place called Reachwater Rock. And when it was done, King Harald issued an edict. The name and deeds of Galder and his sons were to be expunged from every record, every chronicle. Under pain of death, no word of them was to be spoken, lest any try to recover the amulet that had been sealed at so great a cost. And so it was done, but a little survived the ages. Enough. Four thousand years have passed, and the tombs remain sealed. The fragments of the Galder amulet lie within. Since the day I first heard the rumor, I have felt its power calling to me, pulling at me. I will be the one to reclaim it, restore it, bear it out into the world once more. I must have it. I must. Well, this pull seems similar to the pull that Aldusel felt um, to Haldir's cairn, so I, I wonder if Indeed, Haldir and Galder had something to do with each other. Or at least Galder's sons. Um, very interesting. I don't know that it shines much light yes, my on our situation, but it is information nonetheless. And at some point we might be able to use it. Let's take a look at this ivory claw here. Eagle, Eagle, Dragon. We'll try to remember that. Well, we took an arrow to the face, but other than that, we made short work of him. Kinda like that Raya's hanging back here and letting us take care of this stuff. Let's take care of this guy before he becomes an issue. Did I miss that one? 
not being able to see her behind the uh, reflections of my candlelight spell on the webs there. trust Raya to keep that torch out, but it is helping for now. Alright, let's see if I can inch around here. Excellent. Looks like there's a trap. Ah, so close. So yeah, I'm capped at 25 for my lock picking skill as part of the uh, uncapper changes that I've made for Alucel's particular playthrough here. Um, so those aren't going to get any easier. Okay, what do we have here? Are there any clues to this? Or do I just have to start throwing switches willy-nilly here? I don't see any of the typical, uh... Oh boy. <laughs> I'm so sorry about this, everybody. Alright. <sighs> Let's stop throwing switches all over the place and see what each one of these does here. So that one looks like it lifts the first one and the last one. Yeah, first and the last. The second to last is already up. This one does the first one and the second to last. This one does just the second to last. And this one switches. The second one and the second to last one. There we go. Whew. That was making me sweat a little bit. Yeah, most of the um, puzzles in this game are extremely similar. I'm going to go ahead and cast a candlelight spell here. Um, so you tend not to remember the unique ones as much because you don't encounter them as much. It's definitely one of the unique ones. Okay, I was able to just avoid those falling rocks. Those things, even when they move slow, are deadly. You saw I took out the dragger, uh, dragger there. Okay, yeah, I was going to say, these things are definitely coming alive. What do you have for me? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, probably gonna have to remember this order here. So we have from left to right we have snake, whale, eagle. Snake, whale, eagle. Remember that, Raya. And 
and that probably unlocks the staircase here. Anything good to loot in here in the meantime? Guess not. Whoa! Oh, he was tough. Oh, that was a white. That's right. That's why. Get rid of that. Just the one in here, huh? I guess he was strong enough that... He was all that was needed. He was actually tougher than the other two in the other room. Okay, so from left to right... Um, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, I think it was Snake, Whale, Eagle? We shall find out. One turn each. Alright, let's see if this kills us. Yeah, I, I screwed it up. So maybe it's right to left, actually. That would actually mirror what's in the other room there. So snake, whale, and then eagle. Just gotta get your order right. All right, one more shot. There we go. Okay. It's dark down there, so we're gonna cast a light spell. Should still be just fine on our spell count. Ooh, I'm dizzy. A little nauseous now. Whoa, whoa. Spider was a tough cookie. Alright. We're not dissecting the spiders for anything, so we'll leave them be. Looks like some fancy armor. We could probably sell that for a good price. A nice big soul gem. Got to a nice payday. Okay, here we go. One left, I think. How did I run out of armor there? Okado's recital should have kicked it on. Maybe I just killed them all before it could trigger. Anyway, we didn't need it. Yeah, hopefully the rest of this dungeon goes as well, and uh, I can actually increase the difficulty level. The problem is with this game and increasing difficulty levels is that um, uh, you get to the point where most of the game is way too easy but then certain signi or certain specific parts of the game become way too hard if you if you up the difficulty level because of the, the rest of the game. So I'm gonna wait to see what the worst case scenario looks like before doing that. So we have Eagle, Eagle, Dragon. Eagle, Eagle... One more. There we go. valuable for its weight, so we'll take that. Anything around uh, a 10 to 1 value to weight ratio, uh, I usually 
go ahead and pick up tends to be the threshold for worth my while. Um, Alright, I think we're going to need another light spell here, and you know what, I should probably quick save as well. Don't see that every day. Yeah, especially when it's too dark to see. followers dying now. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm almost tempted to uh, load up that quick save and uh, go master difficulty on this one. <laughs> uh, do we have the time for that? That was way too easy, wasn't it? Yeah, let's do that. I know I'm uh, just creeping up on 30 minutes here, but I really want to uh, try this on Expert. Because that would have been a legendary battle there if, uh, if I weren't able to kill McRule so easily. Actually, let's go ahead and save this first in case we need to abort. Candlelight. There's nothing worthwhile over there. Alright. There it is. Do I need... Nah, I'm not going up to Legendary yet. <laughs> I think Master is good enough for an unarmored melee combat character. So, I guess Master difficulty is fine, right? I mean, we did almost get surrounded by all his minions there, and that would have been bad news, but we were able to... Uh, to position ourselves well enough that that didn't become a problem. So let's see here. Let me cruel. Alright, we have the fragment. The black blade will be holding on to this too like we did um, like we did Jirik's staff. Absorbs health. It's pretty powerful. And the writ of sealing. Let's see what we got there. It's named exactly the same as the one that we found in Sarthal, but I wonder if it's any different. Be bound here, McCruel, murderer, betrayer, condemned by your crimes against realm and lord. May your name and your deeds be forgotten forever, and the charm which you bear be sealed by our word. So pretty much the same thing, but just with McRule's name on it instead of instead of Jirix. Um, yeah, so we're just going to give this place the once over, pick up any loot that might be valuable, and try to find any clues as to whether or not Haldir was involved in any of this or any of the dragon priests maybe 
So far, it doesn't seem that any of the Galders were mixed up with any of the Dragon Priests, even though um, the Draugr seem to have strong ties to the Dragon Cult, and therefore maybe other Dragon Priests. Um, it doesn't look like, so far, I mean, we've had, we've encountered two of the three Galder Sons. Um, and nothing about any Dragon Priests yet, so... Um, it's looking very quickly like... Um, this Galder Saga may not be related to our curse regarding Hevnerak or Vakun or Haldir. But we still have one more sun to confront, um... Gyrman's Hall, which was, uh, I think, the third location. Um, and I don't remember the guy's name. Something with an S. Sigdis. Um, still have him. And Galder himself. And I'm hearing chanting like there's a wall around here somewhere. Another one of those walls. Uh, but how do we get these open? I thought they were some... turning pillars. Might be thinking of something else. Okay. This is easier. Then another turning pillar puzzle. Say that ten times fast. But we got some money. And a gem. Need some more light, I think. Um, I could have made better use of my flame rune there, too. Uh, I might have been able to get through that on Legendary, honestly. Which is an encouraging thought. Might actually be able to get this concept to work, huh? Okay, do we have any more baddies in here? Oh, here's another wall. Frost breath, huh? Raya still hasn't seen anything. Um, but again, we have the same experience with one of these very unique walls with these symbols on it. Um, so yeah, this is further reinforcing Alucel's suspicion that maybe it's not him going crazy as far as these walls are concerned, but that maybe there's something to them. Another mystery that just needs to be solved, I suppose. No shortage of those these days. What else does this place have in store for us? Too concerned with the great sword. Excuse me, Raya. easier to push down from the inside than the outside, I suppose. Okay, I remember this place. Back through here. Hop down here to get away from that mess as soon as possible. <laughs> Raya will be able to find her own way to catch up. Can't seem to inch past this, so we'll jump. I wonder if there's anything hiding in here. Maybe a secret door over there? Oh! No, okay. I see it now. <laughs> Open that back up for Raya to catch up with us if she needs to. Oh, I left candlelight active again. That's a very bad habit.
Uh, yeah, it's not going to get any easier for us to unlock or to pick these locks, so that makes those perks in the alteration tree um, regarding being able to reduce the difficulty of these locks to zero uh, a little more valuable to us. We'll probably take those at some point. The issue is it doesn't help keep us alive, it only makes us richer. Um, or easier for us to become rich. So it's not going to be a huge priority to get those to get those perks right away. Huh? Oh, calm down. I'm moving. Okay. So there's another dungeon cleared. Um, some new information there regarding uh, the Galder uh, saga. Um, and while it's nothing that concerns us directly, it does help us uh, start to be able to eliminate um, this whole Galder line as something that we're concerned with. Um, I just don't see uh, anything about dragon priests or Haldir um, in any information regarding the Galders. Um, so that's something. I mean, sometimes nothing is something if it helps you eliminate possibilities and helps you narrow down what you should be looking at. Um, we're still going to see this quest line to completion, I think. Um, it just may not be as high of a priority. Um, going forward. Um, yeah, we do have Gyrman's Hall here, which I think might be the end of that saga. Um, but there was also, what was it, Reach Rock? Which was the final resting place of Galder himself, which might be of interest. Um, even if the sons of Galder um, weren't connected with Haldir, uh, Galder might have been, um, being as Galder was the Archmage, uh, I believe, of the Mages Guild at the time. Um, he may have some information on Haldir. And the Dragon Priest. So that, that's that's worth following up on. But I don't see the map marker for this anywhere. Let's check that journal one more time. It was sorted under map markers, right? Yeah, I really don't know how I feel about sorting mods. Sometimes they just make things harder to find. Galder himself was interred in a cave not far from where his tower once stood, in the place called Reachwater Rock. Okay, so this map location probably unlocks when we get the third amulet fragment from Gyrman's Hall over here, next to Iverstead on Lake Geyer. Um, yeah, so what's next for Alucel? I mean, he is still interested in following up on the Forbidden Legend here. Um, but while he's in Hjalmarch, or I'm sorry, Hafengar Hold, uh, close to Solitude, he is going to um, do what he can to gain access to the Bard's College Library. Um, so he's going to need to um, find King Olaf's verse here in Dead Man's Respite. Um, and he also wants to follow up on this Wolf Skull Cave business. Um, 
And in the meantime, if you can find any books on the Wolf Queen or Potema, um, he's he's gonna he's gonna buy those up. He's gonna collect those now and see if he can get any good information from those as well. Um, and honestly, I'm not really sure if if the timeline on this Galder saga and uh, Queen Potema. Um, or any of this other stuff matches up with uh, with Haldir's, Haldir's timeline or all of each other's timelines. Um, I haven't done that much research on it, and once you get into like timelines and stuff like that, uh, it starts to feel more like homework than it does actually playing a game. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pretend like these were all the timeline makes sense for all of these to to be around at the same time. So yeah, I'm about 45 minutes in, uh, which is 15 minutes over where I try to be. Um, I'm trying to keep these things short, but some of these dungeons are kind of long, uh, and I think it's worth taking the extra time to kind of walk through what Alucel is thinking and, and what's going on uh, story-wise, as this is a story-driven roleplay experience. So. so yeah, I hope you can all bear with me flapping my gums in these longer videos. Um, because I do think it's important for for this format to be able to do that. Um, yeah, so I think I'm going to go ahead and cut the video here, and I will see you all next time when we take on... I think Dead Men's Respite will be the next one, just because we're right there. We'll probably... Well, it's still fairly early. We could probably let Raya hang on to all our loot, and then... Uh, and then head right over there before we head back to Solitude for a night of rest before we go to um, Wolf, Stol Wolf Skull Cave. And we still have a lot of spells left, more than we had before we took that perk, so... So I think we're all set. I think we're ready to go. Uh, yeah, so... I uh, hope to see you all next time. Thanks for joining me. Goodbye. <laughs>